The library was immense. Richly bound leather covers ensconced thousands of volumes of esoterica. Rumor had it that many of the volumes in this library were not even available to Her Majesty's royal librarians. And yet, the wonder of all this dim knowledge was lost on the man standing just inside the French doors, behind the great oak and iron desk dominating the rear of the room. J.D. was not all that interested in books anyway. Never had been. J.D. was here looking for the score. Any crooked low life from the gutter up would tell you it was what they were looking for. They'd all tell you the same thing. The score. That one job with such a perfect payout that you'd never have to pull another. J.D. was no different. He had taken every job from robbery for hire to murder for fun. And for him, this was an offer to retire on. Killigan had turned him on to the job. Usually Killigan only worked with the aristocrats of the trade. Corporate espionage, jewel interception, not the smash-and-grab shit on the evening news where some dumb bloke winds up getting caught because he forgot the door opens in instead of out. Even the occasional disappearance of persons. So J.D., with the criminal version of a workaday reputation, was more than surprised, and more than a little bit afraid, he didn't mind admitting, when a man in a modest off-the-rack suit sat down opposite him while he lunched at jockeys on a cool Thursday afternoon, introduced himself as Mr. Killigan, and offered up a shot at the title. That was a week and a half ago. Planning the caper and raising a crew for a job like this should have taken at least two weeks, but Killigan assured J.D. that security would be at a minimum. After all, Lord Refferton, however affluent, was just another man, pretending that royalty didn't actually make one royal. Besides, the object J.D. was to... pilfer was barely the size of a fist. So barely ten days after shaking hands on his future, here J.D. stood, one step inside a set of incredibly fancy and obscenely unsecure French doors, still as stone, scanning the room with his eyes, right to left, left to right. He was looking for the blink of a security alarm light, the shift of a guard's shadow, listening for the bark of a dog or snap of a light switch in the halls beyond the heavy wooden doors to his left. But all was still, and remained so. J.D. took two steps into the room, stopped, scanned again. Still nothing. The very lack of noise had the career thug on edge. There wasn't even the companionable clink of a radiator or the somnolent hum of a fan. It was as silent as a tomb in Refferton's private library. Two more steps brought him to the desk where he expected to find the package. As he bent to open the center drawer over the knee hole of the desk, Gilligan's instructions had been simple but quite detailed, J.D. could not help but notice a small note on crisp white paper in the center of the desktop's blotter. The small square was exceptionally bright in the light of the half-moon. It read, Jamie Dempsey, Shelf 12, Volume 8. Jamie Dempsey, known in lower quarters as simply J.D., stared at the note with a slack-jawed curiosity that overrode any fear he might have expected. The hell he whispered in the silent library, looking around, startled by his own voice. He looked back at the note, then at the orderly columns of books. Taking a quick glance at the darkly recessed doorway on the east side of the room, J.D. quickly and silently moved toward the wall of books. He peered closely at the shelf itself, saw a bright spot about halfway along it, between vertical dividers, and leaned forward until his eyes were inches from the small plaque. Shelf 4. He squatted to read the label on the shelf below, shelf five. The next shelf down the bottom would be number six, he supposed. Jamie stepped to his right, still in a crouch, and looked at the bottom shelf of this section, shelf twelve. He took a deep breath, counted eight books from the left, and leaned forward until he was almost touching the book with his nose. Black lettering on only slightly lighter green leather read, simply, volume eight. Volume made of what? J.D. thought. Maybe this was a bizarre coincidence, but it was too weird not to investigate. J.D. looked around quickly. Investigate? He wasn't a goddamn detective. He was a thief. He should be out of here right now. The small black and white box removed from the right-hand drawer of the desk, just like Killigan had said, and nestled in J.D.'s specialized knapsack. J.D. should be gone. But the book in his hand... When did I pull it off the shelf? He wondered with a tingle of unease. 
seemed to call to him to root him in place until he had learned its wisdom. J.D. opened the cover, wincing at the uniquely bookish crackle the binding made as it spread. He paged through three blank fly leaves to the first page with printing. There was no introduction, no table of contents, not even a copyright page. It simply read, Chapter. Chapter what? J.D. thought, his curiosity sliding more and more quickly into an uncomfortable, mesmerizing confusion. He turned the page and read, My dear Jamie, I am so glad you are finally reading this. There is so much to tell you before you die. The text was centered on the page, in innocent, normal letters. No gothic swirls or dramatic embellishments. Just two sentences, right in the middle of the page, that chilled J.D.'s soul. He wanted to slam the book shut, damn the noise, and get the hell out of here. He was sweating and he was cold, and every sixth sense alarm he had was ringing merry hell, telling him to get gone. Instead, J.D. turned the page and read, Nothing. The page was blank. He turned to the next page. Blank. He flicked through the next few pages, then thumbed through the remaining inch and a half of the book. All of the pages were blank. He went back to the beginning, hoping he had just had some sort of episode, some fugue. But it remained chapter. Jamie closed the book. Not a slam, but hard enough to send a rough whisper echoing around the library once. He replaced it carelessly on the shelf. Bloody nose in the fucking books, he muttered shakily. He stood, wincing at the stiffness in his knees. How long had he been crouched there? Surely no more than a minute. He stalked back to the open doors, intending to leave. But he turned back to the desk at the last moment. There was still a job to do. A very lucrative job. He leaned down to pull the center drawer out, trying to ignore that disturbing little note but his eyes seemed drawn to it like iron filings to a magnet. And when, in spite of himself, he read it this time, it was slightly different. Jamie Dempsey, Shelf 9, Volume 3. J.D. felt his testicles shrivel as his body broke out in goose flesh everywhere. That couldn't be what it said, or rather what it had said. He looked at the note for several seconds, feeling absolutely no better about it as time passed. He picked up the note and held it close to his eyes in the moonlight, but it didn't change. Then, although every level of his mind screamed against it, his body began to walk again toward the shelves of books, stuffing the slip of paper into his vest pocket. He jerked his head back and forth spastically, half hoping at this point that someone would be there, that he would be able to attribute this... this whatever to some human source, even if he had to explain that connection to the police from inside a prison cell. But no one was there, and he seemed powerless to stop himself from slinking forward to Shelf 9. Conveniently positioned at eye level just for me, he thought somewhat hysterically. He watched his left hand reach out, as though he were watching someone else's hand. It grabbed the third book from the left and opened it, leaping through the first few blank pages, then chapter. J.D.'s breath was unsteady as he turned the page. My dear Jamie, I am so glad you are finally reading this. There is so much to tell you before you die. A thin whine escaped his throat along with his ragged breath, and he jumped at the sound. He quickly closed the book and replaced it on the shelf. He stood looking at the shelves with what he had to admit was more than disquiet. J.D. was just plain scared. With a shaking hand, he pulled the note from his pocket and looked at it again. The light was dimmer over here, but the note seemed almost to shine with its own brightness, even crumpled as it was. Quite clearly it read, Jamie Dempsey, Shelf 15, Volume 22. He crammed the note back into his pocket and stepped to his right, quickly finding the correct shelf. Volume 22 was the last book on the shelf. My dear Jamie, J.D. read no more, slinging the book back into its slot. He reached out and randomly pulled another book from the shelf. I am so glad you are finally reading this. He dropped the book on the floor, completely ignoring the loud thud it made on the thinly carpeted wooden floor. He took two steps to his left, blindly grabbing another volume. Chapter. J.D. pulled book after book, reality leaving him, the feeling of a terrible dream falling over his moves. Book after book. Chapter. My dear Jamie. I am so glad you are finally reading this. 
There is so much to tell you. The lights flicked on with a sudden click of an old switch. J.D. froze, yet another volume in his hand, still resting partly on the shelf it had called home for so long. He was surrounded by a pile of books, dozens of them carelessly dropped and heaped around him, some open, their pristine pages bent and creased. As he stood, still as stone, J.D. heard a voice of immeasurable antiquity speak behind him. It was filled with sincerity and satisfaction. My dear Jamie, it intoned, I am so glad you are finally here with me.